What's up, fish tube? Bearded Bob once again. I'm uh, going to show you setting up my uh, new tank using Akadama as the substrate. Setting these up for Caridina shrimp in the future. This tank's going to cycle for about two months or so before I put any shrimp in here. So let's get started. I'll just kind of show you the items I'm going to use. Here we got a, it's not a matten filter. Well, it is a matten filter. But uh, I bought these from Flip Aquatics. Uh, they were uncut. They don't have the tube that usually sends with them. Uh, they're tank dividers. Uh, they are exactly the same thing as the matten filter, just without the hole and without the little tube that he sends with it. Uh, which is good because I'm not going to be using uh, air driven uh, tube. I'm going to be using one of these little quarter inch pieces of RO tubing and a little mini pond pump and that uh, RO tubing fits right inside of there. <clears throat> we're going to try to do something kind of funky with it so I can make water changes a little bit easier. Uh, we're going to add uh, a couple extra pieces of RO tubing and then some valves. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to use it yet or not. Uh, I've got some snippers to cut the RO tubing. Uh, we got a uh, Phoenix heater. A uh, hang on the glass thermometer there and see that's just a little bit of bentonite clay powder and then our akadama so i'm gonna go ahead and get this set up and grab the 10 gallon tank that we're gonna set this up in and i'll get right back to you all right hopefully you can see me here let's uh get started so the first thing i'm gonna do is uh take this matten filter and uh find about where the center is i want to get really close to the top because i like having a full tank on a lake uh, on most of the matten filters the uh in, or the um, tube comes right through like an inch down that means that if you fill up your tank all the way there's a chance shrimp are going to get over the back and if you have uh, flow going through there like the bubbles from the air pump it's just going to go up to the top and it's going to be loud and uh, I'm experiencing that right now in all of the tanks that I set up on this 10 gallon rack so then what I do is I find the middle and I just kind of start making a little slit I'll take one of these and make kind of a pokey end on it and I'll just push that through. That way you are not making the hole any bigger so shrimp can't get behind there and stuff and then that kind of looks nice when you're uh, when you're on that side. So from here I'm going to take and cut this off as straight as I can. And then on these, you always want to kind of roll your fingers around this new thing that you just cracked because you can see it kind of squishes that, that tube. So straighten her back out. From here, I'm going to do some weird stuff. Like I said, I'm going to use this little pond pump that's going to help me uh, during water changes as well. So what I'm going to do... No, no, no. Wait, wrong here. A little valve so I can shut off the flow going uh, oops going into the tank so then when I'm gonna do a water change I'll have a T over here I'll be able to shut this valve and open the other valve and water will pump out of the tank instead of in through the matten filter so right now it's off that would be on and we'll just push it up tight there. All right, so from there, now we gotta have a couple of little chunks. So we're gonna have this. Uh, oops, we're gonna have this T kind of sticking like that. Then we'll have a new piece of RO tubing that'll come out of there with a valve on it. So let's see. There's that. I'm going to make it close, but not too close here. Put that one on the floor. Then we'll push this one on there. With these uh, quarter inch tubings, you want to make sure you press very firmly to make sure it's seated in there. And then when you pull, it shouldn't pop off. You might make this tube a little bit shorter. We'll have to see how things go. So there's that. <clears throat> Move that over here. We need one more chunk of tubing. 
this tubing is kind of rigid but it's it wants to stay kind of coiled like that so if you use your hands and warm it up a little bit you can usually get it to uh, be a little bit straighter here so what we're gonna do this pump um, when it's in the uh, here you can't even see anything can you this pump when it's in the aquarium is gonna be sitting right down flush against the bottom so I'm gonna pull this off so this uh, pump that I got from Amazon comes with two different sizes of, uh, of things that pop in there uh, kind of constrict the flow or whatever I'm using the smaller one that came with that pump I'll see if I can link it down in the description here so you guys can see it's only like nine bucks or something and uh, they've held up for me quite quite well so I think I have about four or five of them now that I use for different tasks so you want it in there but you don't want it too far in there you don't want it to be poking through the side just in there nice and snug so it's not gonna come off put that in there so like I said this will be sitting down on the bottom of the aquarium and then we'll just have to make this piece kind of connect to that T that we have there so it's a little bit of trial and error you know well, this is actually probably going to be, yeah, it'll probably be right in the center. So where our key go to? Oh, it's on the other side. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. Alright. So that goes perfectly to there. We'll cut it right there. And we'll see how our measurement is. I want it maybe just a little bit shorter than that, just in case. Again, we'll try to straighten this piece out. You can always take some off, but it's harder to... Uh... Eh. I think that will work. So that's what it'll look like. And then this piece will come off the top. We'll stick another valve on here. that one shut so this if I wanted to change water in the aquarium I would shut this one off and then I would open this up and I would put a bucket down below obviously with another piece of tubing oh you can't even see what I'm doing here terrible with this camera anyway open up this valve close that one water will pump through here instead it doesn't pump very far with these little pumps well you'll probably get about maybe three feet of lift um, but after it starts making its own siphon, it'll, it'll help itself. So once you drain your 10% or whatever water changes you're going to do, then you'd shut that one off, open that back up, and you would have done your water change. And then obviously add it back in. Uh, I'll be adding water slowly off and on over the course of the next few months, keeping track of how much, uh, miner how many minerals the, uh, Akadama really does suck out of the out of the water column. All right, uh, one moment. So then, what we have here is a freshly cleaned dollar per gallon sale, ten gallon tank from Petco, Aquion brand. I uh, cut my own glass. Can you tell? Can you tell? Hmm. Yep. I am not very good. This glass is also super, super thin. I think it's like three thirty seconds of an inch. So it's smaller than even the glass from this 10 gallon tank. If you can compare the two. It's about half, eh, maybe a little bit less than half of the width of that glass. So it's pretty thin. But uh, let me get this piece of glass out of the way. See if I can set up this camera without dropping everything again this time. Eh, one second. It's the last way. Alright, let me pause for a second and get you set up. One moment. Alright, so there we're mostly set up there. So now all I'm gonna do is start getting the stuff set up in the back of this tank. Uh, this will be the back. Put this matten filter in, this pump, 
Just kind of let it drop in there. I'll go through and try to make this thing nice and straight. I rinsed this matten filter off uh, yesterday and uh, let it dry out a little bit just so uh, there wasn't some tap water in it. So there might be some minerals already in here. Basically what you want to do is just make it even all the way around and make sure you have enough room for all of the stuff that you're shoving back behind your matten filter. So I'm putting, obviously this little pond pump is going to be down here. I'll stick that down to the bottom so it doesn't move around too much. I'm also I'm going to take this time to throw my Phoenix heater in there. Uh, my basement is very cold in the wintertime. Definitely need heaters. Uh, this one will be, I think I'm going to stay at around 72 to 74 degrees. And these little Phoenix heaters are super nice for uh, changing the uh, temperature. The newer ones have a digital readout. This one's still got a little dial. But uh, green means it's obviously plugged in and on. Red means that it's heating the water currently. The only thing I don't like about this is this little short cord. It's not even a foot from this. So I mean, when you had it, when you have it, I, I'm not gonna stick it in there and plug it in, but you know what I mean? So this will only be six inches or so from your plug-in. Which, it's, I've made it work for me, so it's not a big deal, but you know, other people might not like that. The newer ones, the digital readout ones from Phoenix, they uh, have a longer cord. So there's that. All of the stuff in the back is in. I think it looks okay. It might need to be straightened out a little bit here. Make sure it's all the way down to the bottom. can't really tell from this angle how it looks. How's it look? Let's see through the camera. Yeah, it looks okay. I might have a little bit too much space. I don't have more room for the shrimp. So we'll push it back a little bit further. There we go. And I think uh, we are going to cut this little tube down a little bit. It's sticking out about an inch. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Again, I'm going to cut it at a little bit of an angle. Oop, where did that go? Nobody knows. And that's that. So now it's still easily accessible to reach this valve up here to uh, shut off the water. And then our other tube here will get hooked up to uh, something, some kind of, I might throw another condensate pump just to take care of uh, some water changes and stuff. Um, I do have that Jabao. Uh, auto tapa or auto uh, dosing pump that I want to try to but uh, I don't think that's gonna be on this tank for now we'll see how things go I think I'll use it on some neo tanks with some remineralized water to do automatic water changes all right uh, one second let me grab some stuff all right and we're back all right so now we're just gonna put a little bit of this bentonite powder on the bottom I tried to be like all the cool kids and get all these bacterial powders and stuff but I couldn't find anything that people are using so I did see a bunch of people using some bentonite powder to uh, help add some minerals that are good for the shrimpage. So we'll do a little bit of that, just sprinkle it around the bottom. I do have some Bacter AE that I will be putting in um, on the top. Obviously that's going to be for creating biofilm, so I don't want to shove that down underneath the substrate. Uh, it probably would help get a cycle going in a tank by just putting it down below, but I don't think I want to waste Bacter EE -E powder, powder, excuse me, for that. Alright, one more. One more big one. Alright, and we'll call that good. For now, let me uh, grab this bag of Akadama. We'll get this figured out. So this is the Akadama that I'm using. I got this off of Amazon. This was hard baked. You can see, oh, no you can't. Uh, I'm guessing it was baked to 200 C, so they're calling this hard Akadama. This is not 
uh, triple white line or double red line. Couldn't find any of that. This is the only stuff that that I found that wasn't just insanely expensive. This bag itself was about forty-five dollars delivered, um, and that's only because Amazon had it in stock. So this is what we're using. It's a Irabiki or Ir Ibaraki hard Akadama, and it's a bigger grain size. That's 13 liters, 9.5 kilograms, which ends up being about 20 to 21 pounds, which is about what I use uh, most times in, a, in an aquarium for equal complete. So I knew what the size was going to be. Let's cut it open and see what she looks like. Hold on, let me get a knife. All right, so let's take a look. I'll grab a little handful. We can kind of inspect it here. I don't really have good lighting here, but yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty uh, dusty and dirty, but it did come through the mail. I can crack it open. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to be an issue. But uh, yeah, we'll start getting some of this in the tank. Uh, let me move this bag and I'll get right back to you. Alright, let's fill her up. Got the bag of Makadama down here. And we'll just start adding it to the tank until I'm happy. It does have a smell to it, earthy smell. I mean, obviously, this is like a clay product from Japan. And wow, that is it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting, but looks like there's some smaller grains here, too. And I'm looking for enough in here um, where I can plant some plants without too much of a hassle. Um, I will be uh, using some fertilizers in here, it's just some Thrive S. Um, I may add some root tabs just to start off with. And, uh, yeah, this is quite big. A lot bigger than anything I've used thus far. And there's quite a bit of I'm not sure what this is, like hay or something, but there's a bunch of pieces of those in here, so there's some organics, which may or may not be a good thing, like with, uh, with the cycle, having something to break down in the water column uh, to start growing the bacteria. Alright, let's see where we're at after this one. Looks pretty good. Oh, there's another. Must be a root. You see that? No, you can't. A piece of root or something. So I'm sure all that stuff will be uh, floaties. This cup. And there we have it. There is. Uh, inch and a half layer. We'll just smooth it out. All right, we'll have to get it in place and then uh, see what's going on here. We'll have to start filling it up with some RO water, which that's going to take a while. So, we'll be right back. One moment. All right, so we got it in place. Uh, it's up here with the rest of these 10 gallon tanks. And we're gonna start filling it and you know what I might just check back on uh, an update video on this uh, in the next couple of days after I get it filled up because I'm sure it's gonna take at least half a day to fill I'm not gonna wait on putting a video out until then so with that said we'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching make sure you like subscribe all that other jazz and we'll see you next time Bye. peace